SwiftUI gives us lots of gestures for working with views and does a great job of taking away most of the hard work so we can focus on the parts that actually matter. Now, we already used on tap gesture in an earlier project, but there are several others to work with, and there are also interesting ways of combining gestures together that are worth trying out. Now, I'm going to skip past that simple on tap gesture here. We've covered that previously. But before we try bigger things, I do want to add you can pass in a count parameter to make these things handle double taps, triple taps, and more. So here we have text hello world. I could say this thing has attached to it an on tap gesture with count of two. And when that's triggered, I'll just print out double tapped, like so. We run the code back. I can press once, nothing at all. Press twice quickly. Boom. Double tapped appears down here. Okay. Let's look at something more interesting, just simple taps, okay? For handling long presses, you can use a modifier called on long press gesture. So here I would say we have an on long press gesture and the code to run will simply print out long pressed like so. Let's try that out. If I tap quickly, nothing happens. Press and hold, we get long pressed printed out. And like tap gestures, these long press gestures have customization options as well. For example, we could specify a minimum duration for this press so that the action closure only triggers after a specific number of seconds have passed. For example, we could say this one here should trigger after only two seconds have elapsed. We'll say this has a minimum duration of zero, like that. So you can press and hold for zero seconds, or one, or two, or well, maybe not 10 perhaps, but Two is a good example here. Let's give it a quick try. So I'll press for straight away and release, nothing at all. Press and hold two seconds. Boom, long press is triggered. You can even add a second closure that triggers when a state of the gesture is changed. This is given a single Boolean as input and it tracks whether the gesture is currently in flight or not. What this means is, as soon as you press down, the change closure will be called with parameter set to true the gesture is currently in the progress of being tracked. If you release before the gesture has been recognized, so in our case here, so two second gesture, gesture recognizer, if you released after one second, for example, then the change closure is called again with parameter set to false. It's no longer in flight. However, if you hold down for the full length of the recognizer, then the change closure is called with parameter set to false because it has finished, it's no longer in flight, but then the completion closure is called as well. We can try out here. We can say we have this current uh, on long press gesture here with a new on pressing changed second trailing closure. It'll tell us if it's currently in flight or not. We'll do print in progress is that uh, in progress Boolean like so. Let's press command R and give it a quick try. So I'll press and release quickly first and you'll see true then false appear back to back. It's being scanned and they're not being scanned straight away. So a quick click, boom, true and false. If I try again, you'll see true printed out, then false and completed. Now for more advanced gestures, you want to use the gesture modifier with one of the built-in gesture structs. We have drag gesture, we have long press gesture, magnify gesture, rotate gesture, and tap gesture. And they all have special modifiers, usually called on-ended and often on-changed. Too. And you can use them to take action when the gestures are in flight for unchanged or completed for unended. As an example, we could attach a magnified gesture to a view so that pinching in and out scales the view up and down. This can be done by adding two new state properties to store the scale amount, then using that inside a scale modifier and setting the values inside a gesture. So we'll say in our view here, at state, private var current amount is 0, 0.0. That's going to store how much we're going to scale up and down in the current gesture. Then we'll have at state private var final amount of 1.0. That's the current finished scaling value for this particular view. Then let's delete this on long press gesture and replace it with a gesture modifier 
like so. Inside there, I'll make a magnified gesture like this. So I'm going to scale this thing up and down with a pinch on an iPhone screen. Like I said, this thing has an unchanged closure that we called with the current magnification value being passed in. And what we're going to say is I want to read uh, into our current mount property the magnification value we're being passed in. So it'll be 1 by default because it hasn't zoomed up at all. So if it's lower than 1, it means it's shrinking. Higher than 1, it means it's being stretched bigger. In our case, we're going to subtract 1 from it. So we'll get a value of zero when it hasn't moved. And negative to make it smaller and positive to make it bigger. We'll then add an onended modifier to this. Again, give me the magnification value coming in. This means that just as release they've released their fingers from the screen. We're now going to add to our final amount whatever is in current amount, hello dog, like this. Add it in, store it permanently for next time, and then set current amount back. To zero. So you can go ahead and drag further and further and further and get bigger and bigger and bigger like this. Let's give it a quick try. Now press Command R. So uh, on a simulator here, you can get two fingers by holding down the Option key and seeing this. So I'm going to go over Hello World and just drag it upwards. It's hard to do with the simulator perhaps, like this. And hopefully, oh, I'm being a chump. I'm being an absolute chump. I'm sorry. Missing one key part of this, which you're probably screaming at your screen right now. They're missing this thing out, Hudson. Yeah. Sorry, our gesture works great. These properties work great. We've got to add that scale effect modifier too. Here, <laughs> scale effect is going to be the final amount, whatever's stored in there permanently, plus whatever's happening in the live gesture we're being tracking right now. That's much better. Go ahead and press Command R. Give that another try with the correct code this time. Again, Option key, get two fingers up, and just click and drag. Boom, there we go. When I release, it'll stay that big. This final amount has been changed. I can do it again and get bigger and get bigger and get bigger, or scale downwards and get smaller and smaller and smaller like this. Uh, obviously, with a real device, it's much easier to use your fingers, um, but on a simulator, hold the Option key down and kind of drag around like this. Okay, <laughs> so that fixed the uh, scaling very nicely. The similar kind of approach here can be taken for rotating views using a rotate gesture. Except now we want to have the missing modifier is a rotation effect modifier. So we're going to say that our properties here aren't just doubles of zero. They're instead angle dot zero here and here. Now it's a final amount starts as being zero, meaning it starts not rotated. We're going to replace the scale effect with a rotation effect that simply adds the current amount to the final amount, like so. And now this bit in the middle, this is where I'm going to change here. This whole uh, magnify gesture is going to go. We want a rotate gesture instead. When this thing is changed, again, give me the value coming in. And our current amount is value dot rotation. So how much we're currently live rotating by in the current gesture. And again, when on ended is called, give me the value coming in. And I'll add the final amount. I was in current amount and set current amount to dot zero. So the zero angle like that. Let's press command R, give it a quick try. You like this, don't you? Yes, you do. So uh, again, you want to hold down the option key like so. And this time, pull it around like a twist motion with your, your finger on your trackpad or mouse that you're using. And you get a sort of spinning thing like that. As you can see, it works very, very nicely. Again, you can let go. And spit it some more again and again because we're storing that final amount separately from the current amount. Now, where things start to get more interesting is when gestures clash. When you have two or more gestures that might be recognized at the same time. Like if you have one gesture attached to a view and some other gesture attached to its parent. For example, we can have an on tap gesture attached to a text view and a VStack that contains a text. Let's give that a try now. Let's get rid of some code here. So I have you know, sort of a simple hello world. I'm going to wrap that in a VStack like so. And for the inner view, this text hello world, I'm going to say we have an on tap gesture inside here. It will print out the text has been tapped. And the VStack is going to have an on tap gesture saying the VStack 
has been tapped. That. So they're both trying to read a tap letter attached to them. Let's press Commander. What we find is, in the situation, Swift UI will always give the child's gesture priority. And if I tap on Hello World, we're going to get text tapped every time. However, if you want to change that, you can use the high priority gesture modifier to force the parent's gesture to be triggered instead. So we say, for example, I want the V stack here. Not a simple tap gesture anymore. This is a high priority gesture here. And this is going to be a tap gesture, like so, with an on editor being called in here, like this. And when this thing ends, I'm going to go ahead and print out the V stack, like so. Tell me when it's been tapped. So let's press Command R. And this time, press Hello World. We're going to get V stack. So it knows, it knows we want the V stack to receive that tap gesture, even though normally it'd be grabbed by a text view inside it. Alternatively, you can use the simultaneous gesture modifier. Tell Swift UI you want both the parent and child gestures to trigger at the same time. So rather than saying high priority gesture here, I'm going to say this is a simultaneous, simultaneous gesture like that. Boom. Again, tap measure on ended print v stack tapped. Let's press Command R. I'll tap here, and now both fire v stack tapped and text. Finally, Swift UI lets us make gesture sequences, where one gesture will only become active if another gesture has first succeeded. This takes a little more thinking, because the gestures need to be able to reference each other, so you can't just attach them directly to a view. Here's an example. I'll show you one now that shows gesture sequencing, where you can drag a circle around, but only if you first long press on it. So I'll say first we have a new property up here that will track how far our circle's been dragged. I'll say at state, private var offset is CG size dot zero. I'll also have a property here that tracks whether currently dragging the circle or not. We'll say at state private var is dragging is false. Now inside our view body, we're going to start out making a drag gesture that updates offset and is dragging as it moves around. So I'll say here, let drag gesture, gesture, be a new drag gesture. When this thing is changed, give me the value coming in. And I'll simply say our offset that we're storing right now is the value dot translation, how far it's moved in its drag. I'll also say on ended, when we release the thing coming through, now I want to know, uh, simply, oh, sorry, underscore here, so underscore in. Now I want to say, okay, just put this back to being zero again, so it resets the whole gesture. So I'll say with animation, offset is dot zero, and is dragging is false. That's our first gesture. After that, I'm going to make a long press gesture that enables is dragging. So we'll say here, our press gesture is a long press gesture on ended here. Give me the value coming in, we'll basically ignore it and do with animation is dragging is true. So you long press first, the trigger is dragging being true. And now we have those two, we're going to make a combined gesture that forces the user to long press and then drag it around. So I'll say here, uh, we have let combined is our press gesture dot sequenced before the drag gesture. So it must be long press, then drag. Now with that all done, I'm going to make a fixed size circle it will scale up a little bit when it's dragged. We'll make its offset be whatever we had from our drag gesture and make it use our combined gesture. So I'll say here, we have a circle filled with the color red. Let's go down a little bit. With a uh, fixed frame width of, let's do 64, height 64. With a very gentle scale effect, 
if we are currently dragging, we'll say 1.5, otherwise 1. So it's slightly bigger. We'll offset this thing based on the offset property we have and attach as a gesture our combined gesture. Let's press Command R and give it a try now. There's a circle. I can drag around, nothing happens. If I press and hold, it grows upwards, and now I can drag around. When I release it, it'll snap back and shrink to the middle again. Again, I can't pull it normally. Clicking and dragging does nothing at all. I have to press and hold. It triggers long press, and now I'm in drag gesture mode. These gestures are a really great way to make fluid, interesting user interfaces. But please make sure you show users how they work, otherwise they can just be confusing.